Hey everybody, Katrina from Different Drummer Dance here. It is Tuesday, it is time for a tip. So I've been working a lot lately on summer dance camps. I've got a whole playlist of tips and tools and uh, games and activities, all sorts of things that you can use for your summer dance camps. So keeping on that theme, today's video, I am going to share with you how I structure my summer dance camps. I know this is probably kind of a personal thing, but I figured might as well share what I found works for me in the hopes of maybe it working for you as well and helping you out. So normally when I plan anything, any any kind of camp or activity, um, I like to start at the end and work my way backwards. So I like to start with the end goal and then work my way forward so that I know what do I need, what I need to accomplish during the week or two weeks or month or whatever it is that will lead me back to that end goal. However, I don't do that with my summer dance camps. Um, I find that usually because they're shorter and they're usually, I've got new kids coming in, it's not necessarily the kids that I know that have been coming to class um, for a whole year or months or whatever. I find that there's a lot of variables with summer dance camps, so I plan them a little bit differently. I start with my, with my day one, um, hour by hour um, kind of checklist for things I want to do. So say I've got a Monday through Friday camp that goes from 9 to 12. I'm going to start with, by planning Monday first. So I'll write out Monday, 9 a.m. Welcome. I'll set down rules and do like a little icebreaker for names. And then usually we'll go into a technique class, whether it's ballet or hip hop or whatever. I find that kids are usually best and fresh in the morning, unless you're working with teens. That's a different story um, but for anyone under the age of like 12 usually morning is the best time to get most of your most important work done so I'll do a technique class for 45 minutes to an hour depending on what age group I'm working with then I go into a snack so usually now we're in like 10 15 somewhere around there I give them a snack a little resting period for about 15 minutes then I'll typically go into some sort of it might be a history lesson it might be a craft if I'm working with real little ones it'll usually be a craft that is tying into whatever theme of the camp is so if you've got like a princess camp you might be doing crowns or if you're doing a colors camp maybe you are making something with one of the colors of the rainbow so I'm following up that um, kind of rest time with something to give them a little bit more of a transition back to a higher energy um, kind of activity. So we've got technique, we've got um, snack, we've got craft or some sort of history lesson, something that's a little bit more um, getting their energy back up. And then usually at the end of the day, I like to finish with my choreography. So for a camp, I always do a little end of a camp performance. It's usually something super informal, um, but I like to give the kids and the parents something to perform at the end. And and so the end of the day will be our choreography lesson. Um, I always, with the choreography, I have a broad general idea of what I want to do. I'll have the music picked out, but I don't really choreograph it until later. And here's why. So your first day, like I mentioned earlier, you probably got kids that are brand new or maybe they're coming back after a while mixed in with kids that maybe you've had all year round. So the abilities, ability levels are probably going to be a little bit different and that makes it hard to choreograph for. So after that first Monday, that first day, of camp where you're kind of assessing where everyone's at, what they're capable of, then after that first choreography lesson, then I'm going to go in and nitpick and make formations and decide who maybe is a leader for the front, who can really carry the group or, you know, whatever. Maybe everybody is all on the same page and you can move forward with that. So that first choreography lesson I use is kind of just a testing ground to see where everybody's out. So I'll give them some really broad general um, things to work on. Maybe we're going to be doing a lot of chasses in the choreography. So We'll work on chasses. I'll try some different combinations with them and see what sticks and what doesn't. That way, the rest of the week, you're not banging your head against the wall trying to teach something that maybe these kids just aren't ready for yet. 
So it's easier for you if you end up doing it this way. So just a little, a little trick that I do. So there's your Monday. Then for the rest of the week, I just use that same formula and then I tweak it here and there. So maybe as you're getting towards the end of the week, you want to work on choreography more. So just shorten everything a little bit. Maybe you only do 45 minutes of technique. Maybe you only do 30 minutes. Maybe one day you decide not to do a craft so you can lengthen the choreography section or towards the end of the week, if everybody's feeling a little bit tired you might choose to move the choreography section up to the very beginning of class when everybody's more fresh and has more energy so basically the thing that I found with camps that works the best is just to be flexible so that's why I like to plan I have a formula for each day hour by hour that I know what knows what works knows the no, I know that it works. And then if need be like puzzle pieces, I can just kind of switch things around and move things around depending on how the kids are feeling and me are that day. Because as we all know with kids, it's kind of a crap shoe. We're not sure what we're gonna get. And with the summer too, everybody's doing lots of things after camps are over. So there might be a couple days where everybody's just super out of it and you need to totally rearrange your plans. So this helps me be flexible, but still give the kids that kind of structure that makes them feel reassured. Kids love structure. They love to know what's coming next. So this is kind of a happy medium between those two things. Now, if I've got a longer camp, if I've got like a two week camp, that allows me more time to assess. So with something like that, if I've got a two or a three week camp, I probably would use a little bit more of my first strategy, which is starting with your end goal and then working your way forward. So if you're doing a two week camp and at the end of the two weeks, you've got maybe a more uh, lengthy kind of performance planned, then that's a case where I would start with that end goal and work my way backwards. So maybe your goal at the end of week one is to have finished two pieces of choreography. And then midway through the second week, maybe your goal is to finish the third piece of choreography. And that still gives you two days, one and a half days to clean before the end of the performance. So I just find it helpful to have a formula, like I said, that I can rearrange, take the puzzle pieces around, move away, come back to it, and then all Always as well thinking about what that end goal is what steps do I need to accomplish to get me to my end goal so there you go teachers I hope that is helpful leave me a comment below I would love to know what tips and tricks you use to play in your summer dance camps as well because I am always trying to learn as well take care happy teaching and I'll see you next time bye